The Chrysler turbine engine is a series of gas turbine engines developed by Chrysler intended to be used in road vehicles. Topic. Development Research into designing and building a functional gas turbine engine began before the United States entered World War II, with experimental and test engines first being operated in 1954. George Hebner and his group of research engineers were convinced that the engine was a viable project. It had challenges like fuel consumption had to be in the same range as standard reciprocating engines, components needed to be reduced in size and increased in efficiency, noise had to be reduced, acceleration time lag needed to be reduced and engine braking had to be introduced into the overall function. Additionally, new high temperature materials needed to be developed, yet be inexpensive enough to keep the vehicle cost the equivalent of other vehicles of the time. The benefits of turbine engines as explained by Chrysler engineers were reduced maintenance, longer engine life expectancy, large development potential, overall parts reduction of approximately 80% 60 parts rather than 300, requirements for tune-ups nearly eliminated, low temperature starting difficulties eliminated and no warm-up needed, antifreeze is not required, interior heat is available instantly in winter, no engine stalling with sudden overload, engine operates without vibration, oil consumption is negligible, reduced engine weight, exhaust gases are cool and less pollutant, and most importantly, a wide range of combustible fuels may be employed as a replacement for petroleum gasoline. Topic. Testing The first successful test of a gas turbine engine in a car CR1, took place in 1954 at Chrysler's testing grounds. In 1956, the first successful cross-country trip using a turbine-engined car took place. Further engineering work resulted in the second generation CR2, which improved fuel economy and increased horsepower. In 1961, a third-generation engine CR2A was installed in a 1962 Dodge Dart, which successfully drove from New York City to Los Angeles through snowstorms, rain, and heavy winds. The fourth-generation engine, installed in the Chrysler turbine car, was put into use in 1963. This engine runs at up to 44,500 revolutions per minute, according to the owner's manual, and could operate using diesel fuel, unleaded gasoline, kerosene, JP4 jet fuel, and even vegetable oil. The engine can run on virtually anything with combustible properties and Chrysler claimed the turbine could gulp everything from peanut oil to Chanel No. 5. The president of Mexico tested this theory by running one of the first cars successfully on tequila after Chrysler engineers confirmed that the car would operate successfully. No air fuel adjustments are required to switch from one fuel type to another and the only evidence of which fuel was used is the odor of the exhaust. The turbine spins on simple sleeve bearings for vibration-free running. Its simplicity offers the potential for long life, and because no combustion contaminants enter engine oil, no oil changes are considered necessary. The 1963 turbine's engine generated 130 brake horsepower, 97 kilowatts, 132 PS, and an instant 425 pound-force feet, 576 Nm of torque at stall speed, making it good for 0 to 60 miles per hour, 0 to 97 kilometers per hour in 12 seconds at an ambient temperature of 85 degrees Fahrenheit, 29 degrees Celsius. It can sprint quicker if the ambient air was cooler and denser. The lack of many moving parts and the lack of liquid coolant eases maintenance, while the exhaust does not contain carbon monoxide, unburned carbon, or raw hydrocarbons. Nevertheless, the turbine generates nitrogen oxides and the challenge of limiting them proved an ongoing problem throughout development. The power turbine is connected, without a torque converter, through a gear reduction unit to an only moderately modified torque flight automatic transmission. 
The flow of the combustion gases between the gas generator and free power turbine provides the same functionality as a torque converter but without using a conventional liquid medium. Twin rotating recuperators transfer exhaust heat to the inlet air, greatly improving fuel economy. Varying stator blades prevent excessive top end speeds, and provide engine braking on deceleration. Throttle lag and exhaust gas temperatures at idle plagued generations 1 and 2, Chrysler was able to remedy or mitigate these to some degree. Acceleration lag, however, remained a problem, and fuel consumption was excessive, although it improved with each generation. Acceleration was excellent provided the turbine was spun up, by applying power, prior to releasing the brakes. The turbine car also featured a fully stainless steel exhaust system, the exits of which were flat in cross-section. This was intended to spread the exhaust gases thinly and thus cool them further, in order to allow the vehicle to stand in traffic without risking damage to following traffic. The combustor, or burner, was primitive by the standards of modern turbojet engines. A single reverse flow canister featuring a more or less standard spark plug for ignition was employed. Had the engine been further developed, annular combustion chambers along with a second power turbine might have improved power and economy even more. The transmission has an idle position instead of neutral. After the user testing period completed, Chrysler collected all of the cars, destroying most and sending most of the remaining examples to museums. Topic. Later development and project end Chrysler's turbine engine program did not end with the Chrysler turbine car. A new coupe body, which was to become the 1966 Dodge Charger was considered for a new fifth-generation turbine engine. However, Chrysler went on to develop a sixth-generation gas turbine engine which finally met U.S. nitrogen oxide regulations, and installed it in a 1966 Dodge Coronet, though it was never introduced to the public. A smaller, lighter, seventh-generation engine was produced in the early 1970s, when the company received a grant from the United States Environmental Protection Agency EPA, for further development, and a one-off, special-bodied, turbine Chrysler LeBaron was built in 1977 as a prelude to a production run. However, by 1978 the company was encountering significant financial difficulties and new CEO Lee Iacocca needed U.S. government loan guarantees to avoid bankruptcy. A government condition of that 1979 deal was that the gas turbine program be abandoned because they believed it was too risky for an auto company of Chrysler's size. While Chrysler's work with turbine engines never paid off in the retail automobile sector, the experiments proved fruitful with the incorporation of a Honeywell AGT-1500 into a slightly different product, the M1 Abrams main battle tank, developed in the late 1970s by Chrysler Defense, which was later sold to General Dynamics. Topic: Engine series CR1 1954-1956, Plymouth Belvedere four-door Approximately 100 horsepower, 75 kilowatts No engine braking Slow spool up CR2 1956-1957-1958 Plymouth Belvedere, 1957 Plymouth Fury Better regenerator Better fuel economy, 18 US MPG. CR 2A 1960 minus 1962 to 1960 Plymouth Fury, 1962 Plymouth Fury 2, 1962 Dodge Dart 2, 1961 Dodge two and a half ton stake. Turboflight show car. 140 horsepower, 104 kilowatts, 375 pound-feet, 508 Nm. Adjustable nozzle blades. 
A831 1963-1966-1963 Chrysler turbine cars 50 130 horsepower 97 kilowatts 425 pound feet 576 nm much less lag 50 cars plus 5 prototypes all but 9 were destroyed Surviving examples, location and operational status number 991211 Museum of Transportation, St. Louis, Missouri, active. Number 991225 Gilmore Car Museum, Hickory Corners, Michigan, inactive. Number 991230 Walter P. Chrysler Museum, Auburn Hills, Michigan, active. Number 991231 Private Collection in Terre Haute, Indiana, active. Number 991234 Henry Ford Museum, Dearborn, Michigan, inactive. Number 991242 Private Collection in Burbank, California, active. Number 991244 Los Angeles County Natural History Museum, Los Angeles, California, inactive. Number 991245 Smithsonian Institution, Washington, D.C. Inactive. Number 991247 Walter P. Chrysler Museum, Auburn Hills, Michigan, active. A875 1964 to 1964 Plymouth Furies 2 Same as A831 but with larger regenerators Gen 6 1964 1973 Prototype Dodge Charger 1966 Dodge Coronet 1973 B body sedans 3 same as A875 but with split accessory drive. Gen 7 Coupe 1977 to 1976 four door Dodge Aspen 3 Concept F body 79 Murata Concept 1980 Chrysler LeBaron 104 horsepower 78 kilowatts could be raised to 125 horsepower 93 kilowatts.